What's up guys, Duarte here with another Marvel Psych Force video and in this video we're going to talk about the Cosmic Crucible Season 6 you guys have been asking not stop which is my defense so in this video we are going to talk about which is my defense and also the thought process that went behind this we used the scientific method we were together all on the live stream we had over 150 people on the live stream when we were talking about this and we came to certain conclusions on which teams are going to be the best on each of the rooms and why some teams being in one room invalidates the other team being in other rooms so this is going to be extremely important if you want to really get the best value for your defense and as always if you like the information on these videos make sure to share this video with your friends on facebook and discord if you're new to my channel make sure you subscribe for more mouse like first content and make sure you smash that like button like a boss okay so in terms of leagues we're going to start off in the masters one we drop it off from masters 3 to masters 2 and master 2 to master 1 so we are going to be good to go and uh, we're going to still be facing a lot of people already at level 100. level 100 it was a big deal at the end of last season of course because scopely wanted to make sure that all the whales were uh, getting the top 200 uh, ranking rewards and uh, but as we go forward this difference between the powers is going to diminish and then it depends on your play style do you want to play more offensively do you want to play more defensively i think these defenses that we're going to talk about have the correct balance in between both and uh, after it all comes down to your creativity on using the teams on offense now in terms of the rules that we have for this season of cosmic crucible we have that the symbiotes count as superior six and sinister six sinister six on successful attacks gain a 15 percent barrier and uh, on uh, successful attacks of the enemies on sinister six superior six and symbiotes we are going to be able to remo remove the revive of the enemy so this is a great way to make uh, Dormammu relevant and also making sure that you are very aware or on when you are using your symbiotes and your sinister six characters because otherwise you are not going to be able to counter characters that revive so keep this in mind and i think people are going to make uh, this mistake for a long time that uh, they they think you can remove the revives right away it's not the case and once again characters that have the chance of reviving have a lot more value in the season okay so with this in mind we're going to take a look at this insane spreadsheet that we are using to, uh, last uh, last sunday on the live stream with uh, the the theory crafting that uh, we were making right so i put uh, all the rooms on the screen and also the plug and play characters the mythical characters that we can use in each of the rooms you can see that or the the green is good yellow is maybe the orange is bad and we try to define exactly which are going to be the best characters and the best teams for each of the rooms so for room one we have characters with the skirmish eyes white and the raider eyes white below 50 percent health are going to do 200% more damage so we need characters that go fast that go furious that also have the raider or the skirmisher isolate but on top of that they also need to have the survivability if the characters do not have the survivability it doesn't matter if they have 200% damage or not if they are dead right and this is one of the big problems with gamma and especially if you remove she-hulk or brawn even more brawn is that uh, if they are dead if they don't have death proofs to, to keep them alive then uh, this 200 extra damage is not going to be relevant enough so on room one i put uh, gamma i've mined extreme x-men or unlimited x-men pegasus and uh, sinister six all these teams have ways of keeping themselves alive we have pegasus with death proofs we have uh, gamma also with death proofs if you have brawn i've mined uh, i'm not sure if they have death proofs but uh, they have the evades which keep them alive extreme x-men they can get all kinds of buffs plus forge is always giving barrier and more healing and so on 
And then we have Sinister Six that they can also get death proofs, I think. I'm not sure, but I think a Lizard can spread them around. Okay, so from all of these teams, the one I decided to go towards is the Extreme X-Men. And the reason why it's because the Extreme X-Men is not as good on the other rooms. That's the main case. You could use Extreme X-Men also on room 3 or on room 4. But they really have the most value of uh, is on room 1. Now, some people will think about uh, splitting the Extreme X-Men, the Unlimited X-Men, and make two okayish teams. That's an option, but that means you have to invest on characters like Phantom X, Sunfire, um, Dazzler, and uh, this might be not super welcoming. And uh, while those teams are good, you are going to put Gambit there, and this splits the amount of health that you can have across the board, right? So here in this case, we have the biggest amount of health, the biggest amount of damage, and also the biggest amount of survivability. Okay, so let's take a look at the second room. For the second room, we have Mystic characters gain the drain based on the negative effects that they have. And it's going to be 20% per negative effect, and the negative effects are... Trauma, Disrupt, Bleed, and Offense Down, I think, or Heal Block or something, I don't remember. But uh, it's not uh, anything special, like getting more Drain, it implies that your characters can actually do da damage, and they can actually resist uh, uh, Heal Blocks and take advantage of that Drain. So we have different teams here that can have uh, that effect. So we have Dark Hold, we have Asgard, we have Secret Defenders, we have Tangle Web, and we also have a black order so from the teams that we have right here the most obvious ones were going to be dark old secret defenders and hero asgard but the problem is that hero asgard most people need to have a, a huge investment in them and it might not be the case you most people skip at heroes guardians maybe they have a big val maybe they have a big battery bill but beyond that they don't have that much of a big investment so it means that you'd have to use Dark Hold or Secret Defenders. But then we have that situation once again. If you're going to use Dark Hold here, is Dark Hold better in other room? In my opinion, yes. But from what I have seen for most people, most content creators, they think Dark Hold is the best in room number two. I can understand the reason. It's actually not the case if you think if you really think about it. But anyway, so I'm gonna put here Secret Defenders because while they are nice in some of the other rooms, I really think they get the most value here because, let's be honest, Secret Defenders is all about uh, Robbie Ray's Ghost Rider. And if he dies, it's game over for you. And if he stays alive, if he has additional drain, it's the best for you. And he already has drain on his ultimate, so the more drain you can get on him, the better. He also has attacks outside of this turn that benefit from the drain. So once again, the more... Uh, uh, help that Robbie Reyes has on his team, the better it is going to be for you. So I chose Secret Defenders to be in this room. Now we have the room number three. And the room number three, you double up the buffs that you gain and you double up the negative effects that you give to your enemies. So you need to focus on teams that not only give get themselves a lot of buffs but also apply a lot of negative effects so we can take a look at the case of infinity watch which they get a lot of buffs that's guaranteed but you cannot forget that they don't apply any negative effects maybe when you'll block every now and then and maybe some bleeds but nothing like super crazy so most people all the content creators and so on are putting Infinity Watch here. I think that's a big mistake because you're only using half of the potential of this room. Then we have a Superior 6, which in my opinion is the second best option or the best option actually overall if you put full Superior 6 on this room. The problem is that uh, it's very, very likely that you need to use Superior 6 on offense. And that's why I didn't put them on defense because I think they are better on offense. And then you can put here Unlimited and Extreme X-Men. Both of them get a lot of buffs, speed ups, offense ups, counters, uh, dead proofs. They get the, also the safeguard depending on the team, depending on the combination. So the Extreme X-Men or Unlimited X-Men or hybrid between the both would also be a very powerful team but we're going to use them on room one so we have to use the second best option that is not superior six 
or Extreme Unlimited, which is going to be Dark Cold. And why Dark Cold? Because Dark Cold, they apply tons of negative effects to your enemies. Did you forget about Agatha with ill block, with the stuns against Cosmic Heroes? with the uh, offense down then morgan flame with disrupts with slows with bleeds with uh, all kinds of effects that she can flip with her ultimate on top of the trauma trauma lasting for two turns can you imagine how annoying that is and they also get defense up with safeguard they also copy positive effects from the enemies they also get speed up so why not using this amazing team that gets the both sides of the rooms the negative effects and the positive effects so in my opinion this is the one that makes the most sense is dark cold in room three okay now we have room four and on room four the ultimates will cost three more energy and when you get energy from your abilities you're gonna get a double of that energy so this is going to be very interesting and uh, for multiple reasons one of the reasons it's because the ultimates are going to take a lot longer to charge up and a lot of a lot of the teams that you can use on defense usually they get countered very easy but it's no longer the case because everyone is starting without their ultimates so you need to focus on teams that have very powerful specials and the characters that can also provide energy so i put here wakanda they they have very strong specials and on top of that we also have shuri that gives them energy now should you use nakia should you use mbaku should you use bashinga should you use killmonger in my opinion the two best extras of wakanda is going to be mbaku and bashinga because their specials are a lot stronger than the ultimates and the specials of the other characters and the passive abilities are also better than what nakia and killmonger can provide so wakanda would definitely be one of the best options here but this is going to require you to invest on wakanda and wakanda unfortunately is a very expensive team to get up because all of them require vibranium so it's difficult they also have a lot of misty characters which is also a problem and because of those factors while wakanda should be very strong here they might be one of those situations that you need to be a while in order to use wakanda here then we have secret defenders then we have pegasus we have tango web and we have hive mind now the secret defenders we are already using on other room and pegasus is definitely an option and hive mind is definitely another option if you are using your void knight on defense the problem with void knight on defense is that his ultimate yes it puts everyone together but also the ability block it only affects one target the stealing of the energy it also affects one target and uh, with the ai controlling this it's usually a bad choice so while uh, the hive mind has some potential to be used in this room especially because they are getting some of the energy early on it's still a problem because of the way the ai works and the ai does not have any help in order to be on, on defense right so it's better to have hive mind on offense than on defense even that it's still a decently powerful team so that leaves us with the pegasus which was the team i'm going to use at least part of it okay so now we have room number five and on room number five we have tech characters with their ultimates revive other tech characters so it's not like tech characters revive any character no it's only tech characters and because of that you actually don't have a lot of opportunities because you actually don't have a lot of tech characters that use their ultimates on the second turn and we also don't have tech characters that are useful enough to be here so we have pegasus we have sinister six we have infestation we have bionic avengers and we have a random team that is not a tech so the situation here is really that we're going to use pegasus on room four so if you are using wakanda maybe you could use pegasus here but pegasus in this room gets destroyed very very easily so unless you are trying to burn specific characters on purpose i would not use them sinister six once again they are better on offense than they are on defense because of their flexibility especially now with the, the symbiotes and with i've mind so i would strongly not recommend that infestation they are way too fast and they just don't do enough damage in order for them to, re to be relevant they are also very expensive to get up they need a huge investment for them to be any good so i would not recommend bionic avengers garbage 
So I went for a random team. So we're going to put a, a random team here and, and see what it goes. And finally, we have room number six where uh, buffs will be converted into health, depending on how many buffs you have. So in this room, you want characters with uh, safeguarded, so it prevents you from get, from your getting your, your buffs removed. And uh, any other characters that get a lot of buffs, you need to be careful to see if uh, those buffs ring, being removed is going to be a payout or not. So we have the case of Gamma, which is actually very strong here, because all of those death proofs that uh, Bron is giving to you, all of those are going to be converted into health. The Hulk gets also pretty crazy on this room, and Red Hulk, with the spawning with the safeguard and immunity right away, is also going to increase his health and increase his survivability. So it's definitely a good room to use this guy. And then we have the other options, which is teams with a safeguard that are called Unlimited Infinity Watch. And then we can use a random team. So in this room, I decided to use Infinity Watch because, well, I could be using it on room number three, like I said, uh, other people are doing, other content creators. But I prefer Infinity Watch on this room because, let's be honest, on the other rooms, they are not impactful enough. They don't use the room for their full extent. So why would I use that? It doesn't make much sense. It only makes half of the sense, right? If you are not using the full potential of the room, then what's the point? And in this one, Infinity Watch, they can still be quite annoying. They get a lot of buffs with the dead proofs that uh, activate from their different passives. They also have the evades, they also have the counters and so on. So they get a decent amount of buffs that can increase their survivability. And let's be honest, one of the biggest problems with Infinity Watch is actually the lack of healing provided by moon dragon she just doesn't do enough healing she's just way too slow and this is going to help them out quite a lot so these were the teams that i decided to go with now we have these three four characters here apocalypse scroll dorm and doom and some of these characters are going to have value on these rooms apocalypse is definitely a character that you should not use on defense unless you are using Apocalypse on room 4 because otherwise the AI of uh, Apocalypse is just too stupid and he's going to use his empowered ability on a trash character most of the time so you definitely want to avoid this so you can use Apocalypse on room 4 but I would not use it because he's just better on uh, offense then we have Dormammu Dormammu if you want to use Dormammu in my opinion he should be used on room number 2 you can also use him on room number 5 and on room number 6, but I would not do that because as soon as Dormammu takes his turn, he's going to lose all his buffs, and that's something that you usually don't want for Dormammu, so I put Dormammu on defense on room number 2. Then we have Super Scroll, and Super Scroll I put him on defense. A lot of people are going to use them on offense, which is fine, it's up to you to decide if you want to use any of these characters on defense or on offense. But Super Scroll with the Dark Cold is very, very powerful, especially if you have traumas for multiple turns, if you have uh, the buffs and safeguards for multiple turns. So I'm pretty sure that Super Scroll is going to be super annoying on room number three with, once again, the additional charges on the negative effects and also on the positive effects. And finally, we have Dr. Doom, and you can see from the colors that Dr. Doom is not really recommended in any of the rooms. You could use maybe Dr. Doom on room number five on defense, but let's be honest, Dr. Doom is not a character that you want to use on defense, and that's why I didn't put him anywhere. And once again, I also didn't use Apocalypse anywhere either okay so this was the reasons and the theory crafting behind you guys helped out uh, yesterday on the live stream once again we had like 150 people watching the live stream we have been getting 150 people every day on the live streams to be honest and uh, we all use our hive mind powers to come together and come to these conclusions as well you guys helped quite a lot and i just did the final touch-ups on the setup okay so let's go back to the game and let's take a look at the final defense that i have so room number one extreme x-men with the rogue make sure that your rogue has diamonds and i'm using rogue as a striker because yes with skirmisher she's going to do 200 percent more damage but sometimes having the double tap is better to remove the death proofs and also to remove the flags. And if you if she uses her special or ultimate, she doesn't do that much damage if she doesn't have a striker. So I just prefer to end with a striker with her. 
and the full of the Extreme X-Men. So on room number two, we have uh, the Secret Defenders with uh, Dormammu, because once again, we want to make sure that uh, Robbie Ray stays alive as long as possible, and because of the new rules, they're not going to be able to lose their uh, revives as fast uh, as they got in the past. And Dormammu is also strong here, because he's a mystic character, so why not? On rumor number three, like I said, Super Scroll Dark Old seemed to be like the best option. And then, uh, why not spice it up with uh, Quicksilver? Then we have uh, the room number four, Pegasus, with uh, Thor Infinity War plus Captain America. I think that's going to be a good team, because they start without energy, so Castle is going to do her special first. She's going to apply defense down to a bunch of characters. I put her with the Raider Eyes Await, which is not my favorite option on offense, but it's the best option on defense, especially, once again, if she's starting with her special. So, she starts with her special, then Captain America is going to go second and give energy to everyone else, and that means that the Rescue is going to give uh, offense up to everyone, the Iron Man is going to use his ultimate rather than the special. Even if he uses the special, he's still a very strong special. And then Thor or uses the ultimate or the special, and he's going to obliterate everyone. Finally, we have that seed. Like I said, I'm going to use a random team on room number five because we don't have enough relevant tech characters that can be used here. And finally, we have Infinity Watch on room six, and we have the full team, because on, once again, on this room, you rather have the, the different buffs activating from their passives than anything else. So in my opinion, this is going to be the best defense based on science, based on the types of rooms that we have, the different bonuses that they have, and also based on what's the meta, right? Which characters you should right now have at the top and avoid characters like Asgardians that maybe Asgardians would be good on room number two, but they are definitely not a priority for most people. So yeah, guys, that's going to be my setup for the Cosmic Crucible Season 6. I think this defense is going to hold it for a long time, but we'll see after the first weeks or so. But make sure you guys check out the live streams during the week. Once again, we are always getting over 100 people, usually around 150 people throughout the live stream. The conversation is always going, so I hope to see you guys there. And that's going to be all for now, guys. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you smash that like button. And if you found the video helpful, make sure you share this video with your friends on Facebook and Discord. If you're new to my channel, make sure you subscribe for more Marvel Strike Force content. And I will catch you guys later.